Hi there, Richard the Vicoffin 66, how are you? And you're probably thinking now, oh yeah, <clears throat> why are you wearing that? Why are you dressed like a complete and utter prick? And the answer is simple, ladies and gentlemen. For a laugh, in this video I'm going to be attempting to do something that nobody has ever done, possibly, this week. In one video, I am here, now, going to respond, reply, rebut, refute, debunk, to every single argument that has ever been given to me by a religious person in my entire life. Every single one. Starting now. I don't know. Why are you asking me? I haven't had a pair of matching socks for the last 20 years. The other day I was writing something on my computer and it took me half an hour to find fucking space key. Why is it? I don't know. It just is. Why do you fucking live your life worrying about stupid shit like that? Well, I'm 30, and 31 years ago, I didn't exist, and now I'm here. How can something come from nothing? I don't know. Ask God. He seems to be the expert. Isn't that what he did? Hmm. Plus, you know that's not the argument. You all know that. You've been told before. They base their entire religion on faith. They say it themselves. They profess their faith. How great faith. You need faith. You must have faith. And then, when we talk about that our faith is bad, they say, well, you must have faith to not believe in it. Now what you've ultimately done there, if you said it takes just as much faith to believe in something as it does to not believe in it, what you've then done is rendered everything in the world, every opinion, every viewpoint, as requiring faith. Ultimately, faith has to be applied to every single view, ideology, opinion, belief and outlook that we have. Therefore, faith is a meaningless standard, because it's a constant and therefore completely redundant. Probably. The thing about a prophecy is it should be something that you know is a prophecy about something that you know and can define and pinpoint before the prophecy is fulfilled. Saying something somewhere, somewhere will happen to someone possibly at some point during the day and or night of some degree of severity or insignificance, maybe, for sure. That is not a prophecy. Me. You want evidence? for the fact that I don't believe in God. I'm here. Yes, you're right. Because there's, there, there's so much in that for me, isn't there? You know, I mean, there's such a... I'm, I'm, I, I stand to gain so much through knowing that God exists and yet denying it, knowing I'm going to burn in hell. Good one. That's a really fucking... Yeah, I can see why I would make that decision. However, that argument aside, if I know in my heart God exists, then I'm not an atheist. I've already accepted that God exists. And if I accept that God exists, and it's your God, the Christian God, then that ultimately means I've accepted the fact that Jesus is my Lord and Saviour. I just haven't said it. I've got nothing to worry about. Checkmate. Because he's a cunt. Next. No, I think the monkey came in another monkey that monkey gave birth to another monkey, and over the course of a long period of time, sadly, it turned into what we call religious apologists. Yes, yes, I believe in nothing. Well, let's be fair, nothing exists. We know that nothing, we know there are, you know, areas of this world where there are no things. So yeah, I believe in nothing. So, I'm a bit too fucking preoccupied in my fucking day making myself ridiculous costumes to worry about killing 60 million people. Okay, I'll grind it. He was an atheist. Biggest atheist ever. He, he, he had There Is No God tattooed on his knob. So what? Do you think that means that I'm going to be someone who would probably end up killing 10 million people? Are you seriously suggesting that that is my position? That I support that? Because if you are, just say it. Yeah. It doesn't matter what Hitler was or wasn't. It doesn't matter if he was a Christian, a Scientologist, or you know, a Mormon, a snake handler, or, you know, or, or he was a member of the fucking Mickey Mouse Club. All right? He was a lunatic. Regardless of what he said, regardless of what he professed, we can never know what people truly believe. We can only say what they did, they said they did. However, with Hitler, it doesn't really matter. Not many Hitlers in the world. Thank God. Not literally. Isaac Newton also had sex with his 13-year-old nephew, and was an alchemist. No, 
You must have. No. Are you sure? Yeah. Have you ever had a wank? Like you're wanking? Uh, no, probably not. Well, I don't know. If I don't know what everything is, then I can't know what half of it is, can I? God exists in the half, I don't know. So, God exists within half of the things in the world that I could possibly know. And I have to know those things to know that there's a God. And I know half that he's not in. Wow, what are the odds? What are the odds of that happening, hey? What are the odds of me being able to find and pick out and ha and be knowledgeable in everything that God is absent in? What a mon what a wonderfully bizarre omnipresent deity he is. Okay, can you lot work this out between yourselves and get back to me? Probably the same reason that pubic hair has been around for two thousand years. Doesn't mean it's any. It doesn't mean it's necessary or socially fucking acceptable or helpful. The druids have been around longer. There is one freely, freely given and placed in every hotel room, hospital, military base, church, public toilet, homeless shelter, airport, every single fucking place basically that you can find a space for a Bible. It has been around for two thousand years. I think it's had a bit of a head start. If I wrote a book 2,000 years ago, I would expect it to have sold more than a book that was made a week ago. I've read the Bible twice, I must have missed that bit where Judas, Elijah and Zebedee are sitting around discussing the fact that energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, or when the apple fell on Jesus' head. Your life is meaningless anyway. Mine isn't. I've got a mask. Yeah. There are many things we don't know. And? How do you know they exist in the first place then? If you know they exist for us not to grasp, you must know they exist. That's like me saying behind that door are the actual real life versions of Zippy, George and Bungle from Rainbow. And they want to take you on a magic ride on a giant marshmallow. But I haven't been there and the door's never been open. Fall on the hill and I feel fine. Fool's gold. Raspberry fool. What's your point? It also says that a man cannot sit on any furniture that his wife has touched while she's menstruating. Oh, I suppose you won't mind if we just uh, also ignore that little matter of the global flood and, uh, and, and all you know, the, the creation story and uh, uh, the Ten Commandments. Will ya? Is he? He better written. Because they're retards. Even though that's bollocks, let's grant it and say, yeah, you're okay, so what? That's the best place to have a conversion. Two minutes before you die, those people are the smartest Christians out of them all. They get the same benefits that you do with only two minutes of the fucking work. Yeah, I know. I know I'm going to help. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be punished. I'm gonna take over. Not make a lot of them though, don't it? He holds something back. Well, apart from facts. Well it is if you do it right, yeah. Well I hope he has the decency to turn around when I'm doing things. Thank you. But if you're gonna waste your time talking to yourself, can you at least waste your time doing it praying for something like, I don't know. Cures for cancer, end of war, you know, AIDS cures. I know, I am so grateful. I I'm sinning for him, if anything, because if without sin, his death is meaningless, isn't it? Really, you think about it. I'm making his death worthwhile. I make him the martyr, the hero that he is. You little blue-rinsed, fucking bleached virgins are shitting on him. No, I'm an atheist for other reasons. The sin is just a bonus. Yeah, of course it is. Why are you telling me this? Of course it's murder. You know, what do you think we're going to do? We're going to suck it out? We're going to suck this little thing out of the woman and keep it alive? It's huma the, the, the most humane thing to do is kill it. Ugh, you sick fuck. You know, isn't the sperm alive? I was going to say, life begins at erection. Get out of that one, Rottle. No, it's not. A miracle 
is a rare occurrence. Childbirth is a never-ending inevitability. hundred years ago there were a billion people on the entire planet. There are now 6.8 billion on the entire planet. Not very miraculous, is it? Is it? If the sanctity of life is that precious, do you think religious people could stop having wars? What's the point of fucking praying then? I don't know, I don't know, it's silly, isn't it? It's like, I mean, it's like, why do black people care about, you know, the KKK? You know, I mean, you know, not, they, they don't believe what the KKK believes, you know? They don't, why don't they just let them alone? Why don't they just leave them alone? You know, why do Jews care about the Nazis? You know, they didn't believe what they believed. They, you know, why don't they just leave them alone? Why do they have to get involved? Why do they have to be so fucking, you know, why do they have to be so argumentative? You know, why do homophobes care so much about gay people? Why do they care so much? Well, why do they care? You know, you know, they don't believe in the same things as them. You know, so well, why, don't, why, why, why do Republicans care so much and talk so much about Democrats. You know, it's bizarre. Why do men talk so much about women and women talk about... Why do people, why does, a, why does any person talk and care about another person? It's because we care. It's good to care. We're caring people. Probably, yeah, but that would just be to wind him up. It's a bit fucking inconvenient, isn't it? The, the, that phrase should be, there are no atheists in Fox News. Really? What a morally repugnant, shitty little fucking human being you must be to use that as an argument. Because there's exploiting a person's tragedy, there's exploiting a big national tragedy, there's exploiting a global tragedy. And then there's that argument, which exploits the death and the memory of every dead person ever. Think about that. You know what leads you to killing people? Other people. Well, it does if you're good at it, yeah. Well, considering he is omnipotent, omnipresent, omnibenevolent, and omniscient, I would fucking hope so. He should have a plan, really. That's the least he could do. I don't want him to be freestyling this. A bit fucking stupid, weren't it? Does he? But he's not in love with me, is he? That's what he is. Why doesn't he call? Well, of course he fucking should. He should know everything, really. He should also know my anus and, and ball bag. I mean... But he has to, doesn't he? Well, maybe he's not in charge. Maybe something's in charge of him. I couldn't fly an airliner into, a twin, into the Twin Towers. But some people, they can. What are they, then? So... Who invented the laws of logic? He works in mysterious ways in the sense that he's never here. Are you saying God looks like me? Well, he didn't make me in his own image then, did he? And unfortunately I don't know anyone else's standards. What for? What was I doing? Was I wanking when I came out? Is it? Oh, well that's okay then. That makes everything better. It's a religion based around a relationship. Yes, that is exactly right. Well done. You've got me. Yes, 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 you got me there. Again, nailed to the wall. Doesn't it, Jack? Kind of a redundant, futile argument. A bit like saying, you know, to an asexual that you do realise that asexuality does not offer blowjobs. very slowly. The things that are always are used in the design argument, they're always conveniently wonderful, aren't they? It's a look at the rainbow, look at the stars, look at the mountains, and the sunset, and this beautiful fucking baby, look at this cow, look at the flowers, look at the buttercups. Isn't it marvellous? It must have been designed. And, you know, you never hear any one of them go, look at this dead two-year-old Ethiopian orphan wrapped in muslin who died dehydrated, malnourished from a famine and from the AIDS virus that they were born with, do they? The biggest con in all of them, plain old god of the gaps, must have a, co must have a cause apart from the god that you believe in. Couldn't you not at least entertain that maybe god was created 
by another god, and maybe that god was created by another god, and maybe that god was created by an accountant called Gerald who lives in Swansea. Matt Slick, appropriate name because he's such a greasy for shit. The laws of logic are transcendent, and the problem with that, whilst I cannot account for the laws of logic. Neither can Matt Slick or any other religious apologist account for God's nature or for the laws that God. And what is the point in replacing something that you cannot account for with something else that you cannot account for? The problem I have with the morality argument is it's so it never goes into the depth that it, it really, really, really should. It's always, it's always based around these fucking stupid little principles where it tries to sort of emotionally blackmail you. If you dare try to argue that you know morality is subjective, they'll always turn around and go, "Well, you think that rape and murder are wrong? You know, you, you must believe that." Yeah, yeah. That morality applies to a lot more then rape and murder. I don't wake up in the morning and go, who am I not going to rape and murder today? Everyone. But it's not objective. Because you know what the other problem with objective morality is? Is morality applies to all the little things in life too. You know, our diet, the films you want, the music you listen to, your choice of social lifestyle. Do you drink? Do you smoke? Do you take drugs? Do you have sex? Do you not? Your religion? Your politics? Are you fastidiously clean? Are you a bit of a slob? The point is, these are all things that are subjective. They are choices. If we say there's morality is objective, then what we're saying is everything is objective, including things that are that are patently subjective. That's the problem. But you fucking bearded little fucking you and your gimp anorexic fucking thirty-year-old virgin boy wonder. I'll, I'll grant him what he says. Yes, a building must have a have a builder, a building builder. But the thing is, there isn't a builder. There's builders. There's builders who do different jobs. There's some who bricklay, some build scaffolding, some do the foundations. There's the guys who do the roofing, the guys who do the plumbing. There's the architects. There's the people funding it. There's the foreman. How could you possibly use the example of a building and then only, and then only, cite one god? But what if there's a little tiny god for every single thing? There's a poo god, and, you know, and, and a nipple god, and, and a spandau ballet god, an eyeball god, a pubic louse god. You don't know. I think that's a better argument. The real question is, what if Tom Cruise is right? Well, first time for everything. Even if you get the Christian God, and you're a Christian, there are 35,000 denominations of Christianity. 35,000! So even if you get the right religion, you've still only got 35,000 to one, and I wouldn't bet on that horse. What actually are you thinking when you say that out loud and it, to you it's, it's a good question to ask. The problem of evil. Well it's a problem. That's why it's called the problem of evil. But it's not the problem of evil. I mean evil is a problem. Whatever it is. However you define it. I mean let's sit here asking stupid questions and we'll wait for evil to come around and rape your grandmother, peel her skin off and make it into a fetching hat. It's the problem with evil. It's such a fucking stupid question. It's like saying what is the problem with cancer? Cancer is the fucking problem. Right? The evil is the problem. It's a problem. It makes things problematic. It's a pro problemological fucking I'm problem I'm problematicating you know, all over the problemography of the problemological problemosophy. But what doesn't help that problem is people who ask questions attempting to try and find out what the problem of evil is. Because whilst you're set here asking that stupid question, you're not taking into account the biggest problem, which is you think that I need to define it, and you think we need to agree on everything, and that we have to fucking sit here and be as one in our own fucktarded mental retardation and lack of fucking inspiration. Well, I'm sorry. Humans are very weird, unusual, and in many cases completely and utterly fucking insane and bizarre creatures. And that's the way we like it. And that is every single fucking sodding worthless piece of fucking grammatical twisted semantic fucking linguistically acrobatic pile of fucking useless fucking badger's sperm in a fucking bathtub with an Eskimo's period blood of fucking crap arguments 
points, beliefs, ideologies that have been thrown in my fucking face for 15 years and if you're watching this and you are going to try and fucking use one of them you better come up with something new because I will fucking block you on sight for trying to repeat one of them at me. Now, kindly take your apologetics and fuck off. Richard the Dick Coffin 666. Good night. May God be blessed.